Function Mikroposition und Adaptation. Auch dort sage ich Michael, der ist ein bisschen ein Basis Tool. Für die Kino und Iran Architektur, für die Motiv der Semesterde. Und auch dort ist George Kimmel. Dort ist ein Sure Data Plane. And afterwards, we are going to have a um, short panel session before we go to the okay. So, Mark, please use. Good morning, everybody. So, now we are getting more on the details compared to yesterday. So, hopefully, not boring for those who are not too interested in the technical details. I try to make it a little bit high level. So, let's see. But nevertheless, some technical details so to understand a little bit uh, what it means. This, uh, Network function decomposition that I look at. So, rough outline, uh, I will start with an uh, architecture overview, so the radio access network architecture, then go to two important topics of the 5G normal work, namely one connectivity network slicing, before I then more look into three um, contributions within our project uh, that tackle this uh, allocation of network functions maybe the flexible on-demand configuration of access points or extensions, the end-to-end -end connection composition, then start um, connections, and then the RAM orchestrator, which some sort of predecessor of the overall SUC concept will be presented later, or not more not today, but tomorrow, I think, uh, some integration with the, uh, of the control data layer with the network orchestration. So, the run architecture overview, first very simple, um, that's the network, uh, very high level, so in the upper um, right corner you see basic and run architecture, which only knows about base stations called E-Node-Vs, and actually the complete radio access network is just a set of E-Node-Vs, nothing else. And those E-Node-Vs connect the UVs or the mobile, <coughs> And then you see the names of the interface X2 is the interface between the base station, S1 is the interface towards the core, so-called core, but the core again in the sense is not part of the uh, radio access network anymore. Uh, there are all the control entities and uh, gateway functions towards the important point. And the same then depicted here as an evolution for 5G, we still start or that's the starting point, we start with the some sort of Core, connecting to the external networks with an evolved S1 phase, S1 star, and um, interface station, uh, interface X2 star, and varies, and this is now different. Um, while NT is a single radio access technology um, architecture, so there was from the start uh, not the idea to, to have all the different radio access technologies like Wi Fi. Um, or 3G within one network was to start with a single trade access technology. But in 5G, we from the start want to integrate all what is there, 4G, 5G, and the promising millimeter wave, so the higher frequencies, up to 6G or 80 gigahertz, for extended um, broadband and uh, Wi Fi. So we want to have a tight integration of all the different. Um, radio access technologies within one network. So again, um, when I talk about radio access network, I'm not talking about the central control functions. I'm talking about what's here, just a uh, um, um, uh, single access point, so these antennas. But the antennas are actually more, there's something more inside. And if you look inside, what's such an access point doing? Um, so here we look um, as the baseline, the LTE, layer 1, layer 2, or physical layer, and we have <coughs> control uh, and supporting convergence up there. So let's start maybe, I don't know, I can't make the point, but let's start on the right probably. So we start at the, uh, what is called high transmission point here, that's the antenna. So, um, one possibility and very common is to have a so-called Cypriot phase from public radio interface which transports time domain samples of the radio signal that needs to be up. That needs to be very small, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe it doesn't help. Okay. Ah, maybe I can use it. Ah. No, I cannot. That's the Anyhow, um, let's go on. So we have the SIPRI signal 
channel, and this is then converted from a serial information stream to a parallel information stream. Then you have a fast read transform, which um, converts this uh, into the frequency domain. So from time domain samples, we now have samples over the frequency. We, uh, we remove the so-called cyclic prefix. This is to have orthogonal um, single symbols. And then the more interesting part starts. We demap from this overall time frequency resource grid um, the information that is included there and separate it um, for the different inputs. So up to this point, you have cell processing or per antenna uh, processing. And from there starting, you have the user processing. So that's in some sort important because here we can then start to differentiate and depending on the service that the user wants um, to do different kind of stuff. Then, okay, processing going further on, we now use the equalization and convert this um, into meaningful information, so real user data. So after the forward error correction, um, so then we have the MAC, the medium access control, the gradual leak control layers, um, which um, just remove the header in the uplink, so we are looking at lower part here of the, of the processing chain, the uplink signal flow, and the PDCP is then doing a decryption, typically a header insertion, a bit compressed, and then sending it towards the core. So at the size where the whole packet system, the non-access graph flow is there, we have the standard IP packets, I would say, that you know from the internet. So and the vice versa, it happens if you want to set something. So, you do the compression, you do the encryption, you probably need to segment, fit it the set channel conditions, at certain MAC headers to state what service class it is, in the forward error correction, then you adapt it to the current channel, map it to the operator signal, then transform to time, serialize, send it. So that's the processing of a typical LTE base station. So, and since you will hear the terms later on, we call it layer one everything up to the forward error correction, and we call layer two everything on the other side further up in the forward correction. So starting with medium access control. So that is what a base station is doing. You see many, many uh, small functions in there. And if you now think about how to decompose, um, so somewhat uh, assemble the parts that we need depending on the service. Doesn't make sense to have um, the smallest blocks um, possible to, to compose to something else. So um, what you see on top, so we have phi cell specific, phi u specific, and layer two function blocks. So phi cell specific and phi u e specific are some meaningful composition of the elementary functions, processing functions to a certain function block, and those might be separated into blocks because you will see later, depending on your deployment, what's there from from back hall and front hall, you might be able to, to to implement or execute them on different uh, entities in the network. And the function, the, they have two function blocks already depicted here. RFC Mac typically needs some. Uh, need to be executed on, on the same in the same execution environment of course of type coupling. So RC the rating control adapts to the current channel conditions by segmentation. And um, this yeah, needs to be fast. You cannot sit over latency so the link latency is more better to go. But the TPCP which somewhat is a convergence towards the network layer. So well, RC adapts to the radio part, BCB adapts to the network, um, that can be again separated. So that's probably the deepest detail we have today. Um, maybe just an outlook for, for tomorrow, since we are not just talking about this, but we are also talking about to make um, uh, a whole out of it in the sense of to evolve it towards flexible uh, allocation of those functions. Um, you know the concept of software-defined uh, networking 
and the idea overall idea of Fraction Normal is somewhat to extend it to mobile networks. So we have nine in SDN, a controller with an exposed north of interface and sort of interface using to control the low-level functions. And we take this concept of SDN and extend it towards the mobile network. So that, for example, here we might think of um, a possible easy means to, to influence the scheduler, which doesn't require a re-implementation, but just adding software on top of the controller to modify the behavior. So just now we will be more about this tomorrow. Um, so now, as I said, um, LTE is a single rail access technology. 5G considers the complete set which is there and is expected to uh, come up with in 5G. So we will have different of those specs. So what I actually have shown in the last slide is this smaller five boxes here with the protocol stack, except the PDCP. So there we have different variants depending on the radio access technology. But uh, as I said, RLC is some layer which uh, adapts to the radio specifics, while the PDCP adapts to the network. And we, recall, we may call it differently then. 5G is not fixed, not standardized yet. Let's call it network conversion software, for example. But here we have a single, because we have a single network towards uh, uh, above those uh, radio technologies, <coughs> there's a single conversion software used for all the technologies. And then the second very, very important aspect that we uh, are thinking or already heard it separation of control radio uh, and uh, user playing in the car, I think it's somewhat clear in the radio access. That's what we need to think of and um, make work of. Uh, yeah. And uh, so several tasks that you see that are done within this um, here depicted as run clouds, not necessarily. Um, it can also be, of course, executed within the access points depending on your architect. Again, we will see some comments later. But, um, Abstractly, in the project, we just call it run -off. So if it's executed in the access point, we just say there's a cloud co-located between them. And if it's central or so some sort of centralized processing, then we have an actual physics to separate the run -off. Nevertheless, the overall architecture doesn't change. It's just where we think that it's so that's some sort of give you an overview and maybe one point regarding the separation of control and user plane, why it might be beneficial is if we look here with the, um, with the typical setup now, um, starting on the left side, we have the macro cells, the macro cell network is what was a initial design. Then later on, we had uh, the smaller cells with the lower transmission power. Um, so we ended up with some heterogeneous networks. And one possibility is then, of course, to have all the traffic going through the macro cell. And um, this some sort of creates bottleneck, especially if um, the small cells are of high capacity. So then it might be really beneficial to, to separate the user data traffic and that's shown in the middle, and to set them on a different path, independent of the control, with the significant dash lines, the control is still done from the macro cell. And of course, you can then, that's the distributed uh, approach, you can then start to really take all the processing and centralize it in the cloud. Separation of control and the user plane is also likely beneficial for the radio access, and that's why we yeah, look at that too. Maybe just very short, um, maybe, uh, maybe I skip it, uh, just uh, summarizing the different, the different existing technologies and their specifics um, and use everything 
what's there, because it's there, you can increase the rate of advantage for the UE and uh, yeah, make use of what's there. Why not? So now let's go to two central topics of our work package. First of all, is the multi-connectivity. So what is multi-connectivity? You know, LT has some preset of this. It's called dual connectivity. It's just a single. So okay, again, LTE started with single connectivity. There was no notion of having a UE connected to two different um, cells. So it started with one, and then there were some problems with um, mobility robustness again, especially with the small cells, which led to to this to the need um, to have dual connectivity to make robots to work of control generation. Um, so besides that, of course, you can increase the bandwidth if you have two transmission points um, which are two cells that we can receive and send data. So, and mobility robustness is essentially what I mean with uh, the control channel robustness. So depicted here on the right again, um, we have the single control connection, independent of whether we have only single cell or multiple cells or two most in MT. And for the user plane, there were two options. One is depicted with the dedicated connections to the core for the data user plane, sorry. Or you can again route the, via the master of the class user. So it's not really principal limitation, but the, um, that's the basis of multi-connectivity and you can simply extend it to more secondary ones. So, and think of how to generalize it. Okay, that, uh, of course, was certain, had a certain protocol layer in mind um, in this kind of multi-connectivity once I back. What are, in general, the possibilities to have something like multi um, multi connectivity, starting at the application layer, of course, everybody knows it, the open the connections, and then you have the path, and then you can hopefully increase your downloading bandwidth, um, then you can go a little bit deeper and look at the transport. Very um, um, common is the multi path TCP, um, which, and this is very important. Um, you might then, while well, well, that's end to end, so actually it's hard to, to influence this. Um, you might use a proxy for the second, so then you also bring it into your very access network and can offer this multi connectivity based on the TCP on transport. Then um, going further down, um, you can also do it on IP layer. That's not here in this part of focus and also not the focus of our project. The main focus is clearly on the lower layer, so network conversions, um, the PDCP layer, and that's also a preferred solution so far in the industry for it. And you might have a very tight integration by doing it really down to the Mac layer, but that has certain implications. It's already there for carrier aggregation and LTE. Uh, you might use similar approaches also for different drugs, but it's, as, as I said, ROC and below is depending on the radio access technology. So if you span different radio access technologies, it won't work if they are too different. So um, most promising is therefore probably PDCP. And that's um, what I have in this box around internal only means this is the core part of processing within the radio access network. So there you're free to do whatever you want to do. While in the other options, you start to somewhat um, go into the regime of end to end. So, and therefore, you can use something like a proxy, but um, OK. I stop here. The focus in the remaining part will be clearly on RAN internals so on the PDCP and a little bit on the next. Okay, so having a more detailed look again, um, what we are doing or what is multi connectivity is the extension of full connectivity. You have central single PDCP layer in the 
the edge cloud again with my people located with microcell, but nevertheless the concept is the same. And then it talks to different policy layers with different um, access points and distributes the traffic. So, and this allows you to scale the traffic, even to duplicate the traffic, more reliability. So, many options here. Um, very practical example where you actually must have multi connectivity is the, or where we think you must have. Okay, the other state, it might work standalone, we are not that sure, but uh, it's a millimeter wave. The millimeter wave has some very specific propagation uh, characteristics, um, namely um, this classical cell like. Um, um, thinking of cell edges is a little bit wrong if you go for high frequencies, it's more and more going towards the line of sight system. So if there's something blocking the direct line of sight between the antenna and you, the lower end, you lose the link. And if you lose it, that's what you're doing. You need to hand over or you need to get your data from another access point. And the second is you need very high antenna gains to um, actually be able to communicate. So there's no need of broadcasting in the classic sense. So how do I find then, again, the connection? So and to solve those problems, a simple solution is to go down the frequencies, to use the macro 5G ELP with the low frequencies for control, and for link maintenance, um, and then assist the user, the mobile, to re-establish a connection to one of the Millimeter wave access points in the color area of the micro So, and if you do this kind, you might then think of how to route the traffic. So that's control. So single point of control. There is also a control from the millimeter access points for for the fast link allocation. But if you look then, uh, as I said, on the PSP layer, we're talking about EVCP multi-connect. On the left side, we have the, the um, single millimeter wave access point transmitting. There, it might be reasonable to have that around the two the ELP, the, the low frequency ELP, but starting with uh, multiple, um, with, uh, with distributing data to multiple access points, cross switching, for example, uh, it might become a bottleneck uh, towards the base station, the, the macro wave station. Therefore, and now you see, we have the RC, the control part, and the PCP in the ELP on the left side. And now we move the, 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 the processing, the function, to a more central point here called 5 3 plane controller. As I said, it's just uh, in flow everything, it's just an idea and proposed approach for this. You see, we have the same popularity depending on what we have, what's the scenario. Uh, currently, for this UE, you might want to move a certain function where it's executed in the network. So, and that's connecting to the basic idea of, of the project. That there's not a single best point where to do a certain functionality, but maybe physically to move it depending on the current um, service that you need to experience. The protocol stack is it's transparent in this sense. The view doesn't see where it's executed, it's always looking the same. It has a protocol stack to the base station, the YP, um, the and so the meter waves. Um, so it just sees that there are uh, multiple um, lags of the P and of the CP base Okay. Another application of the, and that's the last slide to, to come, PCP. You can also, of course, use it to integrate the different um, radio access technologies that we want to integrate in the old 5G system. I think it's somewhat a common assumption among all that at least LTE and the new 5G radio will use some sort of uh, same approach um, how to do this micro connectivity. For the 3G, it's there, it needs to be supported. Um, different means are likely 
so to avoid any any need to 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 tackle the, the differences between the PE and the body and five pieces. So here's a heater working kernel as, as a possibility, so it's kind of rather upper, higher, higher point in the connection. So but at least for the for evolving NT into for IG, sorry, um my connectivity based on the PCP is so I think a viable solution. So just one slide to the make paste. Um, it's it has certain, okay, um, it's, from my personal perspective, um, as I already pointed out, it only totally makes sense if you have very similar rate access technologies. So same timing, um, because it's highly either working with the scheduler, which works on the PPI basis, so on the um, interval that base station schedules are the conditions, and there, there's some deviation you already run into problems with doing the map based uh, mining connectivity. The advantage is clearly we have full control of where the data is going. You can even send different segments over different links, whatever you want. So it's almost perfect um, control for for the base station or for the entity which uh, has the um, mining connectivity under control. But as I said, certain Maybe a good solution if there are, um, again, for the bigger wave systems, if you have, uh, you know that um, there's not this accomplished problem, then it might work. Anyhow, just for completeness. And in a rough comparison, you see here a little bit in red uh, the, high, the problems of the party connectivity based on Mac or of the lower layers. Synchronization in the sense of scheduling, and you need the uh, fast, and therefore, because it's working synchronously with the transmission time interval on the end, and on the end, um, you need also a high speed um, communication needs between those who they are jointly transmitted. So, in the, in the sense. okay, perhaps you can read it. I think the slides will be shared. So. Okay, um, it sounds easy, but if you look into details, there are some, some issues um, that need to be tackled. Um, these are some basic functionalities which are executed in the different layers. Um, for example, just to give you one example, the ordering is happening with my connectivity. So originally, it's just an RFC, and now it's also a PDCP um, task because um, we have different legs and they might uh, come in different, um, the wrong order. So uh, you might think of uh, having only a single layer doing certain basic functionality, like we already different possibilities for what example be the resegmentation which is done now see we move it down to the to the main layer, sorry. So um, that's that is work that needs to be figured out to make this a good um, simple um, future to um, yeah, approach for my economy. Okay. Um, good. Enough for my connectivity. I think time is running. I need to speed up. Um, very short. That's really short. I think only three slides. Uh, slides. Just what is network slicing? Because it's a central part. Um, and one of examples about it. So what is network slicing? Network slicing is separate, as a network slice, is a separate logical network that delivers a specific set of services, characteristics, and, is, and that's important, is isolated from other network slices. So isolation is a very important issue uh, or benefit. That's why you want to do it. In the end, you want to have some sort of networks that are in state of the art run on separate hardware to be run on the same platform while being as separate as if they were run on separate power. So now if you look at classical slicing in the network, also easy, instantaneous, so you might want to have more knowledge and then you think of and come up uh, with the observation that some part um, might be shared. 
So, um, and this you can start from, from, from the requirements, from service requirements, and look, um, are there slices that share them, and then say, okay, same functionality, I'm sharing this functionality towards the antenna, and um, hopefully, um, yeah, without, and still maintaining this kind of separation that we want. So, um, we will have then in the radio access network, in contrast to the remaining network, really one functionality which is shared between devices. And this is the major issue and need to resolve our project. And I think we will also have a talk in the, uh, in the morning still with, with um, Christian, who is just talking about this kind of sharing, how you then integrate the your, your work. So you see, um, the, the functional decomposition is so some sort of key uh, enabler to allow such sort of separation and of into slices while sharing some functionality and the granularity, which is adapted exactly to share only yeah. that part that is really needed, that must be shared, and you can then separate this. So without a detailed sort of fine granular fraction decomposition, you are unable to achieve this. So the examples it looks a little bit complex. It's not really that complex. So you see three examples how to implement network slicing three options. Um, so example A, here, you see the slicing is here going down as far as possible. So almost a complete fine. I think that's the extreme case, the most that you can do. At least in the end, you need to share the antenna. So there's a way around it. In this sense, the same power amplifier. And therefore, that's the lower part. And then you have all the trying to work separate. It's somewhat complex, but of course, you can do whatever you want to do within your, um, in your slice. The major problem with it is that it's not working for, for example, for ATD because the model designed to have this kind of separation within common spectrum. So you need a specific uh, radio access technology designed to support such kind of, or to support it efficiently. Um, <coughs> therefore, somewhat limited uh, in the, in the end, mining connectivity is then executed as part of the slice and the slice. Uh, more viable, again, uh, taking uh, the PDCP-based mining connectivity as the core idea for this network slicing is to move up the layers and um, do separate layers up to above the, the PDCP. So you have your own your radio resource control RC, that's a control entity that's separated per size, I put one of the control per size, and then you have the PDCP um, layer and the multi connectivity, and then the RC says, well, I will use these legs and uh, want to have uh, for my slice of the service those legs to so this UE best support needs of the UE. That's <coughs> I think a quite good solution. Um, you have flexibility, you have control over the quality of service by by influencing the scheduler, um, at least the scheduling which happens on top of these people for the service scheduling of the radio link resource scheduling. That's you know um, but maybe that's not so important for the change. And finally, Mac based, um, there you need to share some uh, or have some common control to make it work, so somewhat limited in what you can do. Again, Mac is somewhat problematic. That's why at least it's somewhat converging towards my um, connectivity. Good. Um, that's just a little bit what I already said. We have here on the right side core with separated slices in the going, but now we have control and data, and data goes to the multi connectivity anchor, which is DCP, for example, which is the second case of the previous slide. And the control uh, says, um, configures this kind of uh, multi connectivity legs and cross scheduling according to what slice was. Essentially, you will have more or less a common run, but uh, the upper parts of the run function 
function blocks are under separate control, while the lower part below PCP is somewhat higher. That's one approach. Okay, now to the last part. And um, this is the, uh, should be the main part of today. It's the electric allocation of network functions. And here I chose to show you three contributions within the project from partners. Uh, the first is the flexible on-demand configuration. Uh, and the second, I think I will, depending on time, handle this two and the last, let's see, but maybe at least the two first. Um, sorry for the huge amounts of text. Um, I tried to shorten them a little bit. So what's the problem that this um, approach wants to solve? Um, uh, as I said, um, well, LTE has monolithic, uh, has every functionality in the base station at the antenna. Um, here we have different possibilities, what's doing, what we are doing near the antenna, what we are doing more exactly in the cloud. And so you can do it either more or less semi-stactically, uh, depending on what is there in your network as a uh, link capacity to the antenna side, for example, or you might want to make it more dynamically. So if you want to make it more dynamically, you need some sort of uh, means to expose what the processing at the antenna can do. So you need some sort of means to expose these capabilities. And then the second point, of course, to configure it and to change it. That is so Ideally, the we per service on the fly. So that's eventually what um, what this specific contribution is um, all about. These are, I think, the most meaningful possibilities of splitting the functionality between processing at the antenna side and processing at a separate uh, edge cloud. So. If you remember the SIP interface, that's the first one. So the CR1 option, where you have the radio front end, you have the time domain samples, they are going up, and then you have the file processing and all the other things. The problem is, again, sorry again, that's this so small. I didn't make a slide, but um, I can read it for you. You see um, it's stating very low latency, so in the microseconds, uh, 10 microseconds, tens of microseconds received. <coughs> Um, that's not a fixed boundary, but it's more contribution limitation. And more critically is the bandwidth that we require. That again, it stays with the number of antennas. We are going up in the count of antennas to the state of the art, but four, eight, and massive MIMO, 256 antennas as is the maximum. So we see it's not sustainable at this time of per antenna. Um, uh, interface because the rates being here are set to 25 gigabits per second. Just and that's also the rate we need to be the, the service aid idle, so that's nothing going on. So probably not the best approach. Then a little bit more processing, CO2 total antenna, maybe the lowest part of the file, except the user specific processing. So um, if you remember the first slide. Uh, talking about the processing chain of LTE, there was a boundary between um, user processing and um, cell processing. So it's at that, that boundary, you have the user processing part on top and the cell processing down. And uh, the good with this bit is that you uh, have the possibility to scale with the traffic. So if there's no UV, there's a traffic. Uh, not perfectly, but in this going in this direction. And the rates are here because uh, about one or two, so gigabit per second, so all of magnitude less. The round trip time is better, so it's 1.5 milliseconds in this sense. It depends. As I said, it's a, it's a soft boundary. Uh, it's degrading because the channel is moving and yeah, so it's no little bit uh, efficiency. Then we can go further up in the split and see a free. Here we have essentially all um, radio dependent processing at the radio side. So up to the RC, the radio conversion software um, at the antenna, and only what is going up from the, from the network conversion software at PDCP 
traverses within the edge log. There we are at rates which are saving exactly as the other rates that are the net other rates that are going over the gradient of this. And finally, we move all the functionalities into uh, the processing at the antenna side, and then we are there where LT starts. So that's the distributed farm. These are, I think, the most meaningful um, possibilities, but nevertheless, so with this you can do depending on the requirement, see statically, build your network that way. If you have high capacity links, do some sort of tier two, tier three. If not, do DRAM, or if um, you have dark fibers, you can do tier one. But that's some um, fix, you deploy it, and then you can run. And now we are thinking, um, depending on what service you have, uh, it's beneficial to have some sort of good control in each the layers. Then you can improve spectral efficiency, coordination, um, and this costs bandwidth on the on the network side, so front wall or mid wall, or I would call it. Um, but it uh, improves the spectral efficiency, the efficiency of the expensive spectrum, or the usage of the expensive spectrum. But other services are completely off. You need to have all the processing here on the antenna because the latency constraints are so hard um, on the service that you cannot, do any, cannot uh, fit in any communication latency. So then you would say, I do the distributed run for certain low latency services, I do broadband for CR2, uh, CR3 because I want to coordinate and improve the overall spectral efficiency of my network. So, um, but that's not possible if you have a fixed uh, setup. Uh, although the distributions are there, we have no means to, to reconfigure. So, yeah, that's another example where you can see um, the, the uses of the different, the different splits. Especially here, simple small cells might have exactly this um, kind of CR2 split where we have um, not only the, the cell processing at the side, but more user processing. And, uh, central power. So, um, just an example, we will get the slides, so I will skip this. Yeah. So, what I just said, so we want some sort of, and this is the, the idea of this partner contribution to make this reconfigurable. So, these different kinds of um, options, uh, we want to have them essentially per UE, billion per service, per error, maybe. Let's see, but um, instead, while, while it, currently we only have it semi-statically depending on the requirement. And all this needs some connection to the, the set organized network and of course control layer. And there again, we come or we start to integrate uh, into the overall picture of um, quite now the software defined minutes. Okay. <laughs> software defined um, mobile network control. But I start five minutes. Everything's fine. Okay, good. Um, good. And uh, so I skipped the signaling in detail. And as I said, depending on time, it seems it's hard. Um, just to give you another example further up in the layer where you benefit from, from uh, function decomposition. And I skip the problem, I just go right to the here because it's easier. So there's a function called reagent, insert it, and what you do is you pick the red, low, you split up your transform connection into two, and thereby you can optimize. You can work around the deficits of the transform layer, the internet, PCP, which has some problems with high bandwidth leg markings. So that's a good example, and that's also some kind of function block instantiate it, remove it with your, maybe here's another slide, remove it with the handover of the UE, you might move the agents depending on where it is, and that's a dynamic adaptation and reconfiguration of the network, and what's the benefit? That's the benefit, takes for the states. We are a little bit uh, mathematics since we are at the university, I think we need a little bit uh, Stuff. So 
you just name an optimization, and in the end you see here a simple example of nodes, you might allocate uh, depending on the needs of the service, depending on the load of the execution environment, and move your function within the network. So again, with our function decomposition, the way to do it, because then we would have a fixed uh, type of processing with no reason to change. And <coughs> I think that's it then from my side. If I only have, <coughs> oh, that's wrong. That's also wrong. Good. Um, I just wanted to highlight again, thank you to all the contributions. Where is the slide I wanted to show? The partners. I'm, I'm, I'm done, sorry, so you can. Oh, uh, you're probably the first one who can take the minute warning series. <laughs> yes, yes. Was a little bit dark, fast at the end, but uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I think. Um, okay, I think we should take uh, the time to, for one, two, three questions um, before we say and we get on the floor. Um, so, are there any questions? Um, yes. <laughs> Slide where you have the configuration, which is semi static, and then you go per the configuration. Yeah. So, so you mean this one? This one. You say it's a fairly I said this is easy. No, again. Ah, both always dynamic per unit per service per better. Yes. So, um, actually, again, um, if you remember the very first. Slide with NTE, there was the single, or there's one split. Um, the CL2 is a split, and this is the first split, which is per UE, because all the cell processing is left aside. Um, there, uh, so this split can be combined, um, let's say, um, it means you move from a configuration yeah. thing to a C plane, control plane thing. Or no, actually, um, so actually, um, I have the figure here. We also did this in advance of the project, thinking about that, and we came up with very similar um, ideas. And it's as it's per UE processing, you're free to choose what you're doing per UE. For this, you are I'm doing um, transmission of the lower high frequency domain I2 samples, for example which allows me some sort of advanced multi-antenna processing over all antennas, but that's only for very specific needs, maybe to really optimize spec efficiency. You go further up, you do soft bits, you also have yeah, something. You, so well, you have multiple options, but you say per UE, you choose which yes. one is best, for yes. depending on the exactly. So you, it, it yeah. means that it's within a UE connection, so it's a, a, a control. Uh, well, I mean, seen any okay, maybe, maybe Why? very very simple. So you need at least the cell processing at the antenna because that's the first point where you see per UE some signals. And then you can decide do I am I doing more processing at the antenna for this side, for this region, or not. Not send it to the cloud, yes, process this you further. And further up there's the next decision point. Am I fine now with processing? I'm sending all work completely do the processing, so up to the PCP layer at the antenna. That's what I meant. That's the lowest, lowest of those options where you can really do it per UE. If you have the CR1, you cannot do per UE. That's mm -hmm. all right. So, so you have in the first test something okay. like configuration, so management uh, starting per access point, and then you move per to per UE, let's say. Yeah. So you move from, from point then so to... Then to the control, control layer says, okay, this is a low latency UE, do all the processing, including PDCP at the edge, uh, at the antenna. So, or no, this is a broadband UE, I want to optimize the spectrum efficiency, so move as much as possible towards the uh, edge cloud to the more 
central power to coordinate optimize spectral efficiency at the cost of latency, but latency is not that important. So if this freedom you have, uh, at least if you add, if add at the regime of the specific processing in this processing chain, then you can do it per uh, per week. Yeah. Uh, but this is not VDH, and so then you go fast from this slide. So <laughs> this, this is not VDH, and this is not. This is just the reconfiguration yeah. of the VDH. The VDH is different. That's the next one. I thought. Uh, now you want to also the VDH. So this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, that's an extra part. It's not part of the typical protocol stack. You can really consider it as running, you would have a classical distributed run, it runs on top of the PDCP, it's looking at the IP packets, and then it's not looking at all IP packets, but only at certain transport connections within the IP stream. So, and the idea is, so instead that um, the V talks directly to the multimedia server, the V talks to the V agent on the transport, and the V agent talks to the multimedia server. It's similar to a proxy, but the proxy there, you have no control whatsoever. And here, um, the V agent is an agent for the V, so it acts in the name of the V just for the V. It downloads, for example, the, the content from the multimedia server, then it's near the antenna, and you have a much lower voucher time and better delay product, and then you can more efficiently make use of the varying, um, um, depending on the channel, varying bandwidth that you have for the radio. I think that's the, the problem statements. The problem statement um, is here a little bit different. Uh, as I said, um, that's for a partner, but um, for, for me, the main point is essentially what I just said. We have varying radio conditions on one side, and okay, they are also varying depending on the load, but uh, it's more critical on the radio side. And so uh, the adaptation of the rate of TCP does not really follow that, or it follows faster the shorter ground. That's all. And you then move um, uh, the, the counterpart of the UE transfer connection near to the UE, you can much more faster react to the right channel function. So here the idea is called there's a bottleneck on the core side. Okay. I personally yeah I, I know such networks, yes, but um, actually in that design I would say Increase the capacity on the on the network side, um, but nevertheless, there's not a good fit between what's uh, instantaneously available on radio and what's there on the backboard. So to split this and to make efficient use on one side of it and then efficient use on radio side is available here. Maybe it can be extended to further um, further issues. I don't know yet, but that's an approach. That's an idea. That's one part. I have uh, one question. Okay. Uh, does this uh, fully centralized option really make sense when you want to have a per service flow uh, adaption of basement functions? Yes, the yes. Because you are then rather limited uh, so in, in, uh, in your configuration when you put uh, uh, include a fully centralized. So with the SIP-based, yeah, the SIP-based, as I said, there that's the split below the base station and above the cell user processing boundary. There you have no option. There you process everything. And then you cannot do it per week. So that's the only exception. I think it's on the other slide. Okay. Okay. I think one more question and then. Uh, a very quick one. Just uh, want to check how quick you can do the reconfiguration and have you tested? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Really, I have no idea. Um, okay, sorry. Um, actually, there's going to be a panel discussion right after the coffee break and then okay. go to the uh, presentation. So I think if you have a few more questions, please.
write them down and then waste them again after coffee break and then also Michael and George join the panel. So uh, let me thank again Mark for the presentation.